folks, it's Dane here at Joni Guitars. I, um, I've had a few guitars come through the shop in the past and have pretty much been able to fix most of them. I have run into a couple along the way. I still have a bass here and that needs a heat press for the neck. Um, and so I've done a little research on that and I'm going to build one and uh, hopefully be able to straighten this bass out. It's a really nice old uh, fretless jazz bass uh, fender. And uh, so anyway, that's the plan. I'm going to just, uh, I've just gotten a few of the pieces in for it. And I am going to uh, do a little test on the heating element. All right, let's see how close we are. Cool. Uh, one of these I already ripped open. Oh, I don't know. I thought I did. Well, I guess it ripped open without damaging the tag. So I got four of these. And I'll I'll look up the guys and I'll show you in, in a future video who a couple guys that I uh, I saw with these things. So this is actually a 120 volt or 125 volt or you know you hear all kinds of 110 120 125 130 volt just depends um i think where you're at um here locally everybody considers it uh, 120 or 240. we are uh i'm going to do a test just to see how hot this thing gets it's supposed to do something like 220 degrees uh fixed fixed temp um i wanted the the AC as opposed to DC, because uh, along with DC, um, I would have to have purchased a DC generator, uh, you know, converter. So I would have to plug it in to AC and then dial up what I wanted in DC. Um, I can't remember a couple of the videos that I'm going to reference later they use DC and I guess the advantage to using DC is that as you increase the voltage, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to use four or 12 volts just as a basis because I'm not positive. I don't remember what the exact voltage was, but say you use 12 volts of DC and you're at hundred or you're just say you're at 200 degrees or 220 degrees with 12 volts DC. You can turn the DC voltage up and increase the voltage on the, the unit. The heater but I think that 220 degrees is probably going to be sufficient and I just don't want to have to purchase another part to make the beam I, I don't uh, I wanted to keep this as cost friendly as possible and uh, so anyway I am going to uh, plug the, I soldered the ends of this one unit here like I said I bought four of these guys uh, and I'll give you all the pertinent costs. Uh, I don't remember what I paid per unit on these things. It wasn't terribly expensive, actually. I was kind of surprised they were as cheap as they were. But I don't have the receipt here, so I'll have to look it up. Got them through Amazon. Um, yeah, and I'm using my phone for the monitor, so I couldn't look that up and tell you what I paid for them. So anyway, I'll get to that. But I, uh, like I said, I soldered the end so that I can just push them into the end of a cord I have here. Uh, of course, they will be uh, soldered and put into a loom at some point. But yeah, just gonna just gonna stick them in like that. Of course, this feels pretty loose, so maybe I'm not gonna stick them in like that. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I want to get my uh, my meat thermometer ready and stuff like I should have already done. But hey, why should this one be any different? All right, meet thermometer uh, and power cord. And I don't, I suppose, probably just not have this laying here on top. Of it. I don't think it's going to get that hot. Let's see what happens. See if I can just plug this thing in here and if it will do anything. Or if I'm going to have to find a cord in to put on here. Yeah, I don't think my connection is doing its thing here. I'm going to go ahead and put a plug on this. I went ahead and I uh, soldered this extension cord or appliance cord onto the end of the heating element. And uh, I have an extension cord here to 
plug it into somewhere. There it is. And I'm going to just use a, a clothespin here. I think we're set up. Let's plug this thing in. There we go. And we're off to the races. Did I get a did I get a faulty one? All right, here we are. Wow, I'm already feeling a lot of heat, lots of heat. So it's definitely not just plugged into the cord well because it's gaining temperature quite rapidly. So while we're waiting for this to come up to temp, uh, what what happens here is we have four of these, and I have a beam. I'm going to make it um, 18 inches long. This is the hardest thing was to get the beam. Oh, I'm already well over 220 degrees. Uh-oh. So I'm going to have to... Well, let's see where this goes. Might have to turn it off. I don't want to melt the thing. So the fixed uh, temperature of 220 is obviously not correct. So I'll have to relook these up and find out what went wrong. I'm glad I did this, however. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to get a temperature controller, apparently. So even even though I didn't want to have to deal with an extra part of hardware here, I'm going to have to. All right, and I was starting to explain. I'll explain the build process when I'm doing the build process. So. Uh, I wonder if this thing will get to a point and stop or if it'll melt. Well, all right, folks, the experimentation is going to continue here. So, um, I have the 110 volt or 120 volt, um, heater thing here. I can never remember what they're called. It's a PTC or something like that. Okay. I'll look it up and put it in the notes. I yeah, I'm an idiot. All right, so um, uh, they sent me, I thought I was getting 220 degree Fahrenheit constant uh, temperature heater. And what I uh, discovered after looking at it once again is that it uh, is Celsius. So that's well over 400 degrees. So that's not going to work for what I want it for. Uh, I don't want to burn uh, guitar necks. I just want to warm them up enough to readjust the glue uh, joint under the fretboard. So this is uh, this is not going to work with that type of voltage. So I've been uh, researching and looking for other heaters that uh, are 12 volt possibly, or if I can find a 120 volt that only gets to 200 to 20 degrees, that would be awesome. But I haven't been able to find that. I have found some that claim to be AC-DC. Got me thinking, maybe, just maybe, these are, um, I could I could put DC to this thing and, uh, and see what temperature it gets to if I run 12 volts to it. And I've been researching the little DC converter things. Uh, you plug into the wall and they create DC uh, voltage. Uh, and it's in a range goes anywhere. Uh, the smaller units are like 5 amp and the, the better units are 10. And then there's bigger industrial ones and all that kind of stuff. And I, de I realized, I remembered, I have a battery charger. And, and I realize I'm talking a lot and I know there's a lot of you out there with very short attention spans. So I'll talk quickly. Um, I'm going to test this first of all. Apparently there's no on off switch on this battery charger. It's just you plug it in and it's running. So I'm going to plug it in and then I'm going to check it and see it should be 12 volts. Uh, I have it set on conventional low maintenance battery and then the other option is maintenance free deep cycle. I'm just going to go with the low maintenance conventional. And then there's a 2 amp, a 5 amp, and a 50 amp, which is the jump start setting. I'm just going to stay on 10 amps. And so I'm going to plug the charger in. Charger's running. You can probably hear that. And I put my DC tester on 20 volts and just touch the clips here and see what I get. I've got a reading because it's, uh, I guess it's considered trickle. I've got a reading of 9 volts 58 DC. So let me, let me flip this switch and see if it changes anything. So I just went to the deep 
cycle maintenance free. It actually, yeah, it's reading 977, so it's a little more. Now, if I let me go back to the first setting, and I'm going to jump this to 50 amps just for kicks and giggles and see what that gives me. It gives me 9, 9 volts, or excuse me, 10 volts, 10.15. So, all right, I'm going to unplug that. I don't think that's going to give me enough voltage to actually get these things hot enough. Even if I had a 12 volt one, they wouldn't. This wouldn't get me hot enough uh, to make that happen. So what I'm going to do is these clamps are a little weak, so I might have to help them with something. They're used to being uh, on something. I'm going to I'm going to grab some tape and I'll cut you off here for a second. Put that together and actually tighten it so that it holds better and also it's it's insulating me from other things so we should have a good connection all right so we're putting we're going to be putting 10 volts to the heater now I did a little reading on this just so you know I'm not going in completely blind and uh, it said that if you put if you put AC voltage to a DC unit, then you probably will get some smoke and fireworks. And if you put all right, so can you see that? There we go. And if you put uh, it's a little colder in my shop today than the last time we were doing something like this. If you put uh, DC to AC, you might also get a little, but I think it's less likely. But I'm kind of thinking that maybe with these particular heaters, it's really not a critical thing. We're just talking resistance electric. Hopefully it won't matter terribly which it is. About to find out. So it's going to plug this thing in and see if this thing heats up or smokes up. Uh, hopefully it won't blow up. Okay. We are cooking. I don't know if to do anything yet. Looks like it's starting to heat up. It stopped. It keeps, what is it, circling between seven and nine? Oh, went up. Now it's starting to move. Okay, this will be interesting. I don't know. Let's see what the top temperature gets this way. It's uh, certainly not doing it rapidly. Okay, I turned it off. Unplugged it. I'm just going to reverse these uh, leads here just for kicks and giggles and see if it makes a difference. And actually, uh, they went on really tight that time. I tightened the plastic, the tape up. All right, let's see what happens. Did we drop in temperature yet? Yeah, a little bit. Well, nothing's melting. Well, all right, I'm, I'm gonna call this a fail. So I'm going to have to send these back and uh, get the, um, the 12 volt and the DC converter and spend a little more money than I had planned on. But I can't, cause I cannot find any 110 or 120 volt uh, heaters that uh, have a fixed temperature of around 220. So we're going to call this a, a fail and uh, start over. So no biggie. Just uh, a little extra time waiting for stuff to get here. Until next time, carry on bravely, folks.